Hi, uh, my name is Scott Malik. I'm a uh, postdoctoral scholar at the University of uh, Pittsburgh School of Medicine, the Department of Biomedical Informatics, where uh, my um, uh, principal investigator, my PI, is uh, Dr. Richard uh, Boyce, uh, who works in um, uh, semantic uh, annotation and um, uh, <clears throat> uh, and in um, uh, integrating uh, uh, structured knowledge um, to uh, solve health problems. Um, it, so without uh, uh, further ado, this is uh, the outline of uh, my talk uh, today. Um, I don't have a whole lot of uh, results. I'm still trying to figure out wh what it is that I am uh, trying to do with all of this. Um, the, what I'm going to be uh, 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 discussing today is the um, uh, use of uh, machine reading systems. And my um, goal in the presentation is to introduce these reading systems um, to you. It, these are um, uh, our, our open source uh, semantic um, annotation tools the purpose of which is the extraction of, of um, semantic relationships that go beyond mere uh, co-occurrence of terms or concepts or named entities. Um, and uh, with uh, the, and the, the, the idea is of in um, being able to identify uh, relationships is that you can um, weed out a lot of the the, the, the noise that uh, uh, would come with just looking at um, at that term co-occurrence alone. Um, uh, it, so uh, the two machine uh, reading tools that I will be discussing are uh, SEMREP, which was still developed by the National Library of Medicine, and Indra which is uh, being developed by researchers at the University of Arizona and Harvard University. And the, uh, but I, I am going to begin to start off with why machine reading. So um, with um, the ability to, um, to extract uh, semantic relationships um, that, that is, um, um, re re relationships of the form where um, uh, you have a uh, normalized uh, two concepts that are connected with a nor normalized predicate or um, a concept relationship concept triple um, <clears throat> uh, is that we would like to be able to inform uh, knowledge graph uh, construction and we'd like to be able to take these knowledge graphs and do um, uh, perform uh, the uh, other sorts of operations on them to support research. Uh, among these, um, we'd like to be able to um, uh, have a, 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 uh, to use knowledge graphs to support um, inline mechanistic modeling, for, for example, that uh, a researcher becomes confused about um, an, um, an over, over large statistical association between um, a drug and an outcome. Um, it would be very useful to be able to find out uh, what uh, potential confounders are in that relationship. Um, we'd like to be able to um, use the relationships that are extracted to, uh, to generate novel hypotheses of, about, the, the, uh, about concepts of interest, um, about a potential, say, treatments or, uh, or um, prophylaxis or, or preventative measures for 
um, COVID-19. Um, and uh, we'd like to be able to use knowledge, uh, knowledge graphs to improve uh, causal inference. Um, it, and that is to say to be, be able to take uh, ubiquitous um, observational data and, um, and uh, along with relevant background knowledge and improve our models of that data. Um, so um, one of the goals in the research plan and paper that I'm writing is to A, uh, determine the extent to which the output of these machine reading systems is actually accurate at how closely it fits the in, in, intrinsic meaning of the text uh, per se. And then I'd like uh, to be able to apply it and to apply it to, uh, to um, causal inference problems that one encounters out there in the real world with say electronic health record data and to be able to tap uh, these uh, knowledge uh, uh, computable knowledge resources and use them in a uh, downstream application. Um, so um, what, what the, 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 the paper today, uh, what the uh, talk today uh, describes is, is what these, these tools are and some of the ideas that I've had uh, about how to evaluate them. And then um, I, I'd like, if you have any input into how uh, 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 these things uh, but might be um, uh, done, uh, it would be uh, very helpful. So uh, the, the first machine reading tool that I, I am going to discuss today is the uh, SEMREP, which was developed by the National Library of Medicine. The uh, SEMREP, the, um, SEMREP system was developed to support literature-based discovery, that is the generation of novel hypotheses um, from um, relations extracted from the literature. Um, uh, SEMREP has been, and, and its output has been used in, um, in dozens of applications for um, uh, for uh, for drug safety, for drug repurposing, and um, uh, other areas, um, uh, it, and it uses a, an underspecified um, uh, a syntactic parser, and the uh, um, the specialist lexicon and um, the um, and knowledge from the UML less metathesaurus and uh, various ontologies to um, uh, to um, uh, be able to discern uh, semantic relations. Hey Scott, uh, I've got a yeah, yeah. What, what do you mean by an underspecified um, parser? Yeah, yeah. It, so, uh, w with the, the the parser, it um, uh, the, there's it <clears throat> um, word uh, 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 category is uh, uh, so the, there are words that are called nom nominalizations, which are like treatment. Like, um, uh, I, 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 I am trying to think here. Um, uh, so, in uh, in deciding what a relationship is, if if you say that um, that the patient that uh, that the patient was treated with drug X um, for. I, uh, w uh, that the patient's um, uh, pneumonia was treated with 
drug X uh, that uh, that is is transformed into um, the uh, drug X treats pneumonia. Uh, it um, the, there um, okay. the, 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 the the syntax is it is uh, it, it uh, is not. Um, uh, 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 I, so it's kind of a sorry. flexible syntax then? Is that the idea? It, y yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it, that it, that the the syntactic categories in the surface structure of the words it does not always correspond with. Um, okay. Gotcha. Uh, with how with the word uh, role, it, okay. if it's the, yep. the subject, it can become it can transform into or, or into the the the, the predicate <laughs> and, and, and okay. if it's and if it's the object of of uh uh, <clears throat> uh the, there are, um i put a uh, uh, uh it, there's a, a paper in the bibliography of the slides that goes into uh into great detail to contextualize what's going on with the um, with the parser and and it breaks down the various levels of interpretation of right okay um, of 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 the unit of analysis of semrep is the sentence and it and and uh, in, in the supplementary materials of the uh, of the Killer Joe Glue 2020 paper, it 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 uh, goes through a worked example, and uh, and um, and uh, breaks down how um, a, a sentence is interpreted. Um, okay, thanks. I, I didn't mean to sidetrack us. I just was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's um, um, I've been. Uh, Trying to understand what the underspecified, and oh, of course, you, you you should never use words that you you're, you're not uh, completely okay. familiar with. But I, I put that out there as a provocation to force myself to. Okay. Um, All right. Carry on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, um, so there there are rules that Simrep follows. In um, in um, ident identifying uh, if it has indeed found a predication, um, so there are. Um, let's see if I can find it. Yeah. So um, this file, uh, I, I can. Uh, uh, w w what this says is that for a. Um, see if I can find causes here uh, it is that uh, that uh, for semitic predications of the causes type uh, uh, that that would be um, um, uh, like uh, um, the uh, novel coronavirus causes coronavirus infections there the the um, um, only uh, a, a, a specified set of of predicate uh, of semantic types can be in the concept one, uh, which you may think about as the subject or the agent slot, and only a specified uh, number of uh, semantic types can be similarly in, in the um, in the object or the patient slot um, so um, what this means is that um, it is that Simrep has a, a low um, recall but very high precision the relationships that it does pick out are good but it doesn't pick out everything um, so um, SEMREP has been used to uh, capture a large number, 100 million 
or almost 100 million as of the last release. Uh, semantic relationships from titles and abstracts in SEMED, um, in, in PubMed, and this resulted in the, uh, in a corpus of predications called SEMEDDB, which is, um, um, yeah. So um, a, a another machine reader is Indra, the um, integrated uh, network and dynamical reasoning assembler. Um, and it, this uh, was funded by uh, DARPA, uh, by the big mechanism project. Um, and uh, there's a link to a paper by Benjamin uh, Giori, uh, 2017, um, that it is in the bib. Uh, the um, Indra readers, they, so um, Indra, uh, unlike SEMREP, is, um, uh, ha, uh, is a more modular project. It, you, you can switch out um, what the readers are and um, there's, uh, and it has a different purpose and workflow that, that, than SEMREP. I, it seems that Indra was designed for inline modeling so, so, so that if you have a gene that you are interested in, you can actually query it um, th there and have it um, recall, uh, uh, have it go through PubMed and, and it, um, uh, it finds out what the mesh terms are that are related to the gene or protein or peptide, whatever that it is that you're interested in. And then it will populate um, your, your model in line. I, um, I I don't have a lot of experience with the inline modeling part, but I, I thought that that w w is an interesting uh, um, um, uh, advance in, in the in this area. So Indra has has uh, several readers. Each of these readers has a different focus it, and. Uh, and it adds a different um, uh, layer of interpretation to the text that is that to the texts that are being analyzed. The the reach and trips readers. These are biomedical domain readers, and you'll get uh, methylation, phosphorylations, a uh, very mechanistic type um, it, relationships. The Eidos reader. You, is uh, more general domain, and you get um, and it 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 seems to be more interested in um, in in causative relationships, which are of course extremely important in uh, science as well. Uh, the intro workflow, um, so as I said, it it supports online modeling, um, there's the, uh, a, a step, uh, how, how, how this works is that um, wait. Uh, the workflow is that um, it reads in a, a sentence and, or, or, or text and, and it, 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 it goes through and it um, uh, uh, applies it, it um, f finds out which terms are in the lexicon, and it, uh, and depending on which reader it is that is being used, um, I, uh, there there can also be an uh, a look up um, in let's say the mesh ontology. Or, or others, and, and, and you you can switch these out, so so, so it's it's very cool. Um, uh, so the it, it 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 ingests the text and then it transforms the the text into what are called intra statements. And the, these intra statements are an intermediate representation of the knowledge in the text, and, and then it can output. Um, or assemble models of various sorts.
uh, and um, output uh, uh, these models in, uh, say, the, the PyBell or SBML and, and other uh, formats of use. So the, um, the idea that I had was to combine these two systems, uh, SEMREP focusing on both clinical and mechanistic knowledge, but missing, I, I think, a lot um, because it's too rigid in um, how well it, 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 it picks up um, 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 mechanistic assertions. And Indra, the, which is quite different, um, but uh, picks up a lot more uh, and a lot more detailed uh, mechanistic um, um, uh, re relationships. And the hypothesis be, would be that the merged computable knowledge of both systems should improve performance downstream applications that use this knowledge uh, better than either alone. So to evaluate this, the, the systems, and, and, and this is what I'm in the process of developing is the evaluation, um, and uh, and also a, a, a way to combine the um, output uh, of these systems because it's quite um, uh, um, uh, different. I'll show you uh, how the output looks. So the this is an uh, example. Um, um, uh, of what um, the output looks like from SEMREP. And so we have, um, uh, let's see here. So this is the, is the subject. This is a, um, a, is a, a concept unique identifier or a QE in the UMLS. This is, um, the the subject, the, the the preferred name for it. This is the sem semantic type of that. Uh, this is the predicate or relationship, and this is the object or the uh, patient of the pr predication. And this is the UMLS GUI. And this is the source sentence. Um, uh, whereas. Um, that's what you get if you just look at the Indra statements. Though the, uh, the full Indra output, you, you, you get a ton of stuff, uh, most of which you don't need. But um, for the purposes of the project, we'll have to parse the, the, the full output. And that, and, and that is in uh, XML. And, and to transform it into... Uh, a format that is comparable so that where we can um, uh, perform an apples to apples comparison in their output for the same set of text. Scott, about five more minutes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so to evaluate these systems, what I, I, I thought of doing was um, uh, have a, having um, expert annotators. Um, I am working in uh, uh, some uh, w as the uh, postdoc lead for a machine reading project in Alzheimer's disease, um, and uh, as well, uh, and uh, the methods uh, uh, that, that I'm applying to the Cord 19. Corpus uh, and apply a, a, as well in the Alzheimer's domain, though the um, uh, in Alzheimer's we don't have a cord 19 type corpus that, that that's like a a, a pre-specified set of documents that uh, that's just kind of nice because it um, it's uh, uh, um, uh, uh, it's a, a unified monolithic set of documents that is open 
and everybody sees. Um, <clears throat> so, um, um, my I, I, I idea was to uh, um, it, w w one of my I, I ideas was to have aside from just like a bulk comparison, how many uh, relations do we extract from Indra? Uh, how many relations did Simrep extract? One, in the intrinsic ev eval evaluation, um, have the, have the al Alzheimer's disease experts um, uh, come up with a gold standard um, uh, based on, um, I, I, I would hand them a small list of articles and they would, and a small list of predicates and their job would be to go through the articles and uh, devise a gold standard of, uh, from, from this set of articles, this is what the knowledge graph is that we developed. And then from that, one could do machine reader, machine reader comparisons, machine reader, human comparisons, and human, human interannotator comparisons. That would be the intrinsic evaluation. The other is the extrinsic or application driven application. And that would be um, uh, um, uh, uh, basically um, y using the knowledge in the Alzheimer's corpus to um, inform causal inference models. But the, but the same um, uh, tools could could be used to um, to inform models for uh, COVID nineteen to identify confounders. Say w w one has a therapeutic hypothesis about drug X. Drug X pre prevents uh, coronavirus infections. W w one could use the the, the patterns uh, the 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 uh, relationships that were extracted from the corpus to identify potential confounders. A confounder, remember, is something that um, affects the, uh, uh, the uh, exposure and the outcome. Um, it, that is not an effect of either. Uh, so, um, uh, in, in in the in the first round of of um, running or, or of analyzing um, what comes out of SEMREP as it relates to the CORD nineteen corpus, I extracted uh, uh, at, at the time the the uh, CORD nineteen corpus had some thirty one thousand documents. It it it, it has I, um, a, quite a bit more now. So I, I, I'm not sure that I, I was looking at the right URL, but I, I, I saw 55,000 documents. I'm not sure that that's correct. But um, the last time I checked, it had 33,000. Um, but in any case, uh, um, the, uh, two months ago, I, 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 took I took the, the PMID, the PMC IDs and the CORD-19 corpus and converted those two PMIDs. And, and I pulled the predications that related to the, uh, uh, the CORD-19 corpus. And I found a hun about 100,000 predications in 7DB. And I did some analysis on those. And um, my uh, uh, two colleagues at uh, Rice University and the U University of Washington uh, ran a SEMREP over the full text CORD-19 corpus, and they extracted 804,000 um, uh, semantic pr pr predications. Um, and I'm, w w I had some questions for them, um, and I'm waiting to hear back um, uh, uh, about it. Um, if they did anything uh, uh, um, uh, uh, special in, in processing those, um, 
uh, uh, other, otherwise I would have a few more e details. Oh, and it Let's looks like, time. yeah, yeah, all right, all right. And, that, and that's all I have for today. I didn't mean to cut you off abruptly. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Did yeah. you want to finish the summary statement or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the <laughs> so this is the the state of the project as, as, as it is now. I um, I have to run uh, Indra over the um, the the full text uh, corpus, and I have to finish running it. On, I, I have to figure out which version my colleagues ran uh, SEMREP on so that I can do the same on the same timestamp version of uh, Chord 19 so that, again, I have an apples to apples comparison, but in terms of the content. Um, and um, if you have if any of you have any uh, suggestions on how uh, uh, these uh, sorts of tools might be evaluated, uh, used, or uh, anything, um, feel, uh, feel free to ask or uh, comment or share. So uh, thank you. Uh, it was a, a, a great pleasure to uh, speak with you all today. Uh, thank you. Scott. Please check yeah. the uh, Great. permissions Great. for the online um, presentation document. Yeah, the oh 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 um, the the permissions on the yeah the, you, uh, you, on the slides document. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. 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 Um, let me. Okay. Um. So. so uh, Oh, let's open up for questions then. Um, Just uh, one quick comment. So from our from Victor here from the side yeah. of uh, Semantic Web Company, we've we've actually undertaken a similar task. Um, I mean, this this task of uh, finding extracting, uh, let's say, triples from text is common to many of us, and uh, we are creating a very small, uh, let's say around 200 uh, manually annotated uh, triples from the core 19 data set. So uh, we would be happy to share this with you and uh, so that you can try this out, uh, maybe do a very small benchmark. But yeah, so I think this is also something that uh, many of uh, the other participants have been doing uh, and with other tools also. Yeah. So you're saying you have a data set with uh, re extractor relations available? Yeah, uh, n it's not finished yet. So we are currently working on it. We just, uh, we're manually annotating uh, a couple hundred of them just to benchmark our, our own methods for this. Uh, of course, when this becomes uh, finalized, it should be by the end of the week. I will circulate the link for this. Great. So this is Pedro. One question about the semantic annotation. So uh, your ground truth. Uh, what ontology mm -hmm. are you coding the the ground truth to? Yeah. Um, so uh, the ground truth is coded to the UMLS to uh, concepts in the uh, e Unified Medical Language System in the uh, SEMREP. In uh, Indra, um, that has yet to be worked out. Uh, but but it, depending on which reader is being used, um, y you can switch in readers and you can switch in and out ontologies. Uh, and, the, and there's a, a, a lot of flexibility there. And w we're just trying to figure out how to do it. Uh, uh, got maybe time for one more question. Yes. Okay, hi, hi, Scott. This is Frank. Uh, I'm curious, uh, how many, uh, what is the amount of properties, uh, the, the predicates that the data set uh, contains overall? I mean, the relationships between the concepts, is it in the order of a few tens, a few hundreds or? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so 
uh, with SEMREP, there the um, uh, number of predicates is it, uh, about 30, 35 core. Okay. It's okay. A, and it, yeah. plus it like negates. It, there's like neg treats. And and these these predicates are uh, given a, a given list in I mean initially or they're discovered from the data set. Uh, um, no, the, it's a given list that developed out of the semantic network. Okay. The the the, uh, the UML MLS semantic network and it grew organically, okay. but kind of stabilized around 2010. But it is pretty small anyway. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, uh, so, so, uh, so at the end with SEMREP, I understand, and, and uh, I'm not so sure with uh, INRAP, INRAP, but with, with SEMREP, basically what you get is a, uh, a set of statements uh, that yeah, state a relationship between two concepts that could be proteins, genes, typically these are the ty type of concepts or diseases. Uh, yeah, these yeah. are the main things that you would get. Uh, it, well, you, you get... Um, there, there's a, a, a CLEF um, list of semantic types. Um, okay. it, there are uh, something like uh, uh, I, I I don't know I I haven't uh, uh, word counted how many semantic types there are, but it it, it fills up a sheet mm -hmm. of it, it, there might might be about seventy. So these are things like the uh, uh, ph pharmaceutical substance, um, amino acid, peptides, proteins, and, and, and it, it I mean, the, all kinds of things. Sorry, yeah, and, and the facts that are so extracted from there, uh, can, I mean, how, how much are you sure these are indeed facts asserted in the paper? Like if, if I, a paper says uh, in the literature, it was shown that uh, X influences Y, uh, but we found out the contrary. So, what what would you come up with that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there, there's a uh, in, in the latest version of uh, SEMREP, there's the, there it, um, you get a confidence and a factuality, and and they're um, um, uh, uh, trying to uh, understand more about. Um, how how strong uh, the the assertions are and okay it, okay it include more in, information uh, about qualifying and and, uh, and yeah. with the sem rep um, uh, with the semed db uh, in, in information the, this was these were extracted from abstracts and titles okay where where the assertions are pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Whereas in other parts of the paper, less so. Okay, that, that that's well. There is definitely a connection okay, with the. Okay, uh, we're gonna have yeah. to move on now. Okay. Uh, Victor, yeah, we got We're gonna have to move on because we're running out yeah, of sure. time. Um, so, uh, Pedro, um, are you? Uh, you want to share your screens and? Uh, so we've got we have two presentations today, and Pedro's is next. Yeah, I didn't remember that, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I prepared a very short presentation. So how much time should I use? Well, we have, um, we have 18 minutes remaining in, this, in our scheduled time. Okay, uh, so, uh, okay, I'll get started. Uh, so can you see the slides? Yes, we can see the slides. And if you would start just by introducing yourself, that would be great. Okay, uh, so my name is Pedro Zeckoli. I'm a research director at the USC Information Sciences Institute uh, where I head the Center on Knowledge Graphs. Uh, and so we do research on you know, many, many topics connected to knowledge graphs. And so uh, you know, the, the work that I'll be presenting today is uh, something that we're doing with the tools that uh, we're building. Uh, and so, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, you can go to our uh, web page and check out uh, who's uh, participating and the work today, uh, you know, includes co you know, contributions from many folks uh, 
and students in the center. Uh, and so what, uh, you know, the focus is of similar to the previous talk. Uh, and the idea is to use machine reading to distill knowledge from articles, specifically the core 19 corpus. Uh, and so uh, our focus is really not on running machine reading systems or comparing them, uh, but getting the output and assembling it into a knowledge graph. And so, uh, you know, we've been uh, interested in integrating the data with Wikidata uh, because Wikidata already has a lot of bioinformatics data. So. Uh, here's a, a little sample of what it already has. You know, many, many articles are there. Actually, uh, on the May dump, uh, it had almost uh, all articles from the core 19 corpus, except for a few hundred. Uh, and your know, articles are being added to Wikidata very rapidly uh, as the situation is evolving. And so we're able to benefit from that uh, because the articles have the citations, and, and uh, if, the art, if the authors are famous, you know, it includes uh, links to them, otherwise it just has the names and have all the IDs of the papers. Uh, but it also has information about, you know, genes and chemicals and so on. Uh, and so, uh, you know, this is an example uh, of, uh, you know, estrogen receptor one in Wikidata. Uh, you have a whole bunch of identifiers for it, and it already has, you know, you know the statements of you know, what it interacts with and the biological process and the molecular function. And, you know, it being Wikidata, it has all the references to the sources where this came from and so on. So we figured that we would uh, try to leverage all this information to connect the output of the readers to what's already in Wikidata. And so what we're doing is basically, you know, asking people to give us the outputs of their machine reading systems, uh, as we are not really interested in hosting them or running them because it's difficult and we don't have to want to keep doing it as new articles get you know, add it to the corpus. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we get the extractions and the idea is to combine them with Wikidata and extend Wikidata. And what we do is we actually extract a subset of Wikidata uh, and we host it ourselves. So we're not actually adding the annotations to the public Wikidata. That may happen in the future, but, you know, that has a whole protocol uh, that we have not yet engaged in. Uh, we're currently looking at two reading systems and uh, one is uh, from the Blender Lab at the uh, University of Illinois uh, from a collaborator uh, in one of our DARPA projects. And the other one is REACH, uh, which uh, you know, Scott mentioned before, uh, it's a state-of-the-art system uh, and then DARPA has asked us to actually look at Indra. So again, we're going to just download the extractions from Indra and try to figure out how to integrate. And the challenge is that these extractions basically come in some of these sort of strange to us formats uh, that are difficult for researchers to use. And the goal is to make it a simple format that so downstream applications can consume. And so this is of the format that uh, we are putting everything in, uh, which is uh, triples, but in a TSV file, not in RDF, uh, because we found that uh, most folks that uh, we work with are kind of allergic to RDF, uh, and uh, they prefer TSV. Uh, so our, T our TSV format is very similar to RDF triples with one big difference, uh, which is that every edge has an ID. 
uh, and basically that ID can be used as a subject to provide annotations on the edges. Uh, and then, you know, we have node one, the edge and the node two, and then the type of the value and the edge ID. And then we can include the labels of things so that people can read them and uh, understand what they mean. And we can also export this uh, format into RDF, into Sparkle, and uh, Neo4j is uh, coming. Uh, the data model that we use for the Core 19 corpus is a very simple extension of the data model that's already present in Wikidata. So we added the red things. So when the software says that an article mentions a protein, then we say, okay, there's a mentions protein uh, with a edge. Uh, and all the edges uh, are in the Wikidata way of uh, uh, modeling, uh, so every edge can have annotations. Uh, so the edge has annotations for, with the justifications of where the, you know, extraction came from, uh, you know, the text fragment, uh, where it, in the text fragment it came from, uh, how was it stated as in the text, and then what software, uh, you know, was used, and, you know, we had confidences and so on, we could add them here. Uh, we're currently not getting confidences from the reading systems. And then we load everything into Sparkle and we're doing it in the, so Wikidata Sparkle uh, software, uh, which allows you to give you know, nice visualizations just right out, the out of the box. Uh, so we did a query, you know, articles, you know, genes in articles that mention chloroquine and remdesivir, and then you see what they are. Uh, this one uh, is also interesting. So genes mentioned in papers about chloroquine uh, sorted by page rank. Uh, and so this is cool because it sort of gives, in a sense, the most important genes, or that's what we would hope, but I'm not, uh, and domain expert, so I don't know uh, if those are important, but uh, you know, when we run, when we build a knowledge graph, we run page rank and other centrality metrics over it. Uh, so our Sparkle queries can rank based on the centrality metrics, and this is what you get. So TNF seems right. to be, and CD4 seem to be kind of important. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the greens are the articles and, uh, and you know, you can sort of click and go there, uh, which I will do uh, if I have uh, at the end. So let me just finish. I have a couple more slides. Uh, and so we published everything uh, that we have done so far. <clears throat> so we have a GitHub uh, with the knowledge graph. Uh, and you can download it from there. Uh, we have a read the docs uh, documentation of the knowledge graph that documents the properties that we added to Wikidata. And, uh, you know, I want to sort of put in a plug, you know, you know plug my, our own uh, toolkit for knowledge graphs called K KGTK, which we use to build the knowledge graph. And it's also available on, on GitHub. Uh, we just published a, an archive preprint of uh, describing the toolkit. And uh, we have a Jupyter notebook that uh, can recreate our knowledge graph uh, starting from the, so our, our KGTK file of Wikidata and the files that we get from the Blender lab. And we will be doing the same thing uh, for the reach output. So we will create a Jupyter notebook uh, that will recreate the knowledge graph, our knowledge graph uh, based on, on, the, on the extractions from those systems. And then hopefully as uh, those folks run their extractions on the new articles uh, and Wikidata updates, we just rerun the notebook and publish a new knowledge graph. So that is the plan. 
Uh, and so, you know, this is of the, the Wikidata query. So this, uh, you know, it's so sort of, uh, hosted on our own Wikidata in our, our own server, but it's the Wikidata software. So if I run this query, uh, you know, it's sorting by page rank and you know, all these P relations here with the large numbers are the ones we added. Uh, and, you know, uh, there it goes. Uh, there's the graph. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's kind of nice. You can sort of click on things uh, and see, you know, the neighborhood of those nodes. And the cool thing is that, you know, this is all Wikidata software, we didn't do anything special to get this. We just uh, put our output in the Wikidata format, loaded it in the Wikidata software that we cloned, and then we get these visualizations for free. Uh, so that's pretty nice. So that's, uh, that's the presentation. Okay, excellent. Uh, questions for Pedro? Yeah, uh, uh, Pedro, are, um, so ha, um, is, uh, have you begun to, you, to uh, process the core, cor 19 corpus with Indra? Or are you just starting? Uh, so we 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 are just starting. We we have the reach extractions already, yeah. uh, and so uh, you know we know how to model all the all the entities, and uh, we are still debating how to model uh, the relations and the events uh, because those are not present in Wikidata or or the ones that are present. It's very sparse. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we've been talking to some folks and everybody has their own idea of what's the best ontology. Uh, and we don't want to get hey, more. Hey, Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Scott, you're, you're not muted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My five-year-old left the door open. That's yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is Guqian. I have a question. So uh, you mentioned that you leverage uh, Wikidata triples, uh, for example, existing relations between uh, uh, gene and uh, uh, with other uh, objects. So uh, have you looked at uh, the, the, the portion of the relations available from Wikidata? Sounds like those relations might be, uh, uh, I mean, already being reviewed and can you I mean, it distinguish between the relations you newly extracted versus already available from Wikidata. Yeah, so, I mean, this is something that, uh, you know, we, we, we look at. We haven't done it with the relations, but uh, we have done it with all the genes and proteins and so on. So it turns out that extraction systems uh, can extract many more things that are not present in Wikidata. Uh, and what we do is we identify the ones that are present and then for the ones that are not, we create uh, you know, new entities in the same style as Wikidata. So we plan to do the same thing with the relations. And uh, what we would do in those cases uh, is to add another justification uh, when the relation that gets extracted by one of the readers is already present in Wikidata, we just add another reference to it uh, that so sort of corroborates that uh, you know the same relation was extracted, say, by Indra. Uh, and for the new ones, well, we just model them in the same way. And, you know, it's interesting to think of the kind of analysis that you can do to compare some of the manually curated uh, data in Wikidata with some of the output of the machine reading system. So that's one of the topics that we're very interested in, but we haven't so sort of gotten there yet. We need more readers uh, to sort of do an analysis. But yeah, we're, we're interested in doing that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that that's important because we we really want to know uh, what kind of relation already known uh, uh, between the data points and uh, what are new relations identified from the literatures. Yeah, and in the so the Blender folks from the Blender lab, they identified relations in the CTD database, uh, and so we can also pull those in. That's pretty easy. Uh, because we just need to look them up uh, and then add them to the knowledge graph. You know, what we're trying to do, uh, I mean, we, we ha I have this model that size matters uh, and smallest is best. Uh, and so we don't want to create the largest knowledge graph of the core 19 corpus. We want to create the smallest one that has everything you need uh, so that you can analyze it easily. Uh, so Wikidata is just completely unwieldy because it's enormous and has a lot of uh, so irrelevant stuff and still missing a lot of relevant stuff. So we're really trying to sort of create the smallest one that works. So uh, uh, another question related to uh, the using Wikidata. So uh, can we integrate, uh, for example, those triples identified by different groups? For example, you, you loaded your own knowledge graph into a Wikidata. Is there any way we, we can integrate this kind of uh, identify semantic annotations from different groups using Wikidata? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's in a sense what we are doing. Uh, and so uh, if I go back to the slides. Uh, and so- Pedro, is there some sort of on-ramp for others though? Uh, in, so what do you mean on ramp? Well, I mean, I, if I'm, if I'm trying to, I think I'm trying to interpret uh, Gojen's question. Um, so, so that is basically what you are doing, right? You're taking um, results from, from others and integrating them in with Wikidata. What about others that you haven't done? Is there some on ramp to maybe allow your work to be used by others or taking others Okay. Or, or, or receiving proposals from others for uh, for other knowledge that could be integrated? I mean, that'd be awesome. Uh, we would be very happy to collaborate with anybody who has, you know, ideas uh, and has resources to apply to this. Uh, I mean, the, you know, we're, we're sort of making public our Jupyter notebook uh, that we use to construct the extraction so people can see how we look things up in Wikidata, how we pull things from Wikidata that uh, are useful, and then how do we create new items that are not in Wikidata. So, uh, you know, I mean, the, the Jupyter Notebook is, uh, you know, we're trying to document it as best as we can. You know, it's a work in progress. Uh, but the idea is other people could see how we did it. And then if somebody wrote another Jupyter notebook that creates new ones, uh, you know, they would love to run it and then put everything together. Uh, I should point out that uh, it's all based on the, the Knowledge Graph Toolkit, which uses this really simple tabular format. And there are a bunch of uh, uh, functions available too in the toolkit, which are used in the Jupyter notebook. So uh that that's the idea is that this uh toolkit will also make it easier for people to do what pedro just said by running the notebooks or well customizing just oh, trying and oh you know copying and then changing the code with with the operators there which are well documented there too it sounds like a good opportunity for some individual discussion too and and perhaps collaboration um, we are out of time. Uh, one question I want to ask the group is, uh, is there anybody who would like to volunteer to uh, speak next week? Uh, we have one possible lined up for next week and two others if it, if it isn't uh, next week, it would be the following week. But we may have an opening, we probably have an opening next week. Yeah, maybe you can ask a feature as potential speaker. Uh, yeah, I think he said he couldn't do next week. If, if I... Uh, let me get up to my schedule here. Okay. Yeah, he he couldn't do next week. Uh, he thought maybe the sixteenth. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, Jin Dong Kim might be able to do it next week if he was tentative or the, the week after. Anyway, if anybody uh, can or wants to, uh, just uh, let me know, email me separately, and we'll get that going. Otherwise, we might uh, not have a call next week and would continue the following week. All right. Um, any closing comments anybody wants to make? Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for joining. We'll talk to you another Great. time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.